What's up, y'all? I've got some super weird and super, super strong buffs from my boy Zerka Tree. Uh, please do watch until the end of this video because the first half is going to be delegated to explaining the type change, but I really, really don't want the type change to take away from how cool he is mechanically now, like in terms of all the really cool things he can do with the moves that I gave him and the abilities and the stat distribution and stuff. So I really, I really do encourage you not to just hyperfix him the typing. Uh, because yes, it's fucking weird, but Zerkatree is also a weird-ass fucking Pokemon, and Ultra Beasts in general are weird and don't have to follow conventional rules. I'm gonna explain the typing in the first half of the video. Second half of the video is gonna be talking about mechanical stuff. I'll probably bounce around between the two if you know my typical video style, but if you are a new viewer here, please do make sure that you check out the Google Sheet in the description. Not every single type change and hack is as weird as this one. This is probably in, like, the top five contenders for, like, least logical type changes in my opinion at least because he does have tree attributes he does have grass attributes but in terms of him literally being grass type meaning he's weak to like fire and stuff like it's it's a bit cursed but i don't give a shit because it's cool as hell it makes him a million times better and it's just way more unique because we have tons of pure electric types there's like seven or eight of them and he would overlap a lot with like ampharos and stuff and i just don't I, he's so much cooler as an electric grass the only other one is rotom who like barely counts anyways um and this gives him incredible dual stab and all this other fun stuff and awesome new moves as well which i'll get into in a second but i just want to explain the type choice first so some of you guys might actually not hate this one as much. Again, type changes are subjective. It's my ROM hack. I like it. But if you don't, I'll try to explain it to you. But if you already like it, then great. I'm happy you're on board with it. Um, and again, I'm recognizing it makes little sense. Like, I'm not trying to say this is like the most fitting typing in the world. But the way I see it is these are ultra beasts, right? They're these interdimensional aliens. I don't see why they have to follow conventional like type change or type uh, rules. Like, I don't see why he can't just be a fucking weirdo and be grass type because he's like a tree, technically. Obviously, he, I know the whole thing of Zerkatree is that he's supposed to be like a tree, but he's not actually a tree. He's artificial. He's like plugs and cords, but he does behave like a tree. It literally says that he is a... Uh something about like power yeah some of them stand up moving like trees they learn moves like ingrain they learn power whip they learn solar beam they learn energy ball they learn grass knot like the moves are there it's again it's weird but it's a rom hack it's fun it's really strong it's really cool so that's the logic for it all right it's it, it makes it a lot more unique from the other pokemon uh and now i can get into the fun part which is how he actually functions so even if you don't like the type change please do listen up for the actual like usage of the tree so he has two great abilities uh again all of these busting changes are balanced for in game and you're supposed to use an infinite use ability capsule to switch between your two abilities so every pokemon has two useful abilities dazzling you might be thinking why would i ever use that over volt rush volt rush doubles your speed under electric terrain hence why i dropped his speed also because i don't see him with 83 base speed in general like i guess he could run like i know you can see them like galloping in the back of the fucking ultra plant but <laughs> they're fucking like skipping around they're so oh, Zergatry is so cool but um yeah, 53 base speed in Volt Rush with a neutral speed nature at max. Still outspeeds literally everything in the game for the most part. Um, you're, out, you're hitting 410 base speed. You're hitting 410 speed, not base, excuse me. 410 speed, which that's like extremely fast. You're hitting, you're outspeeding literally everything. You're outspeeding literally everything. The only, I think the only thing you would not speed is is uh, Deoxys speed. So, and that's with max IVs, of course. But in general, like, you're gonna outspeed everything. You don't even need max speed investment for most fights. Say, for example, the boss trainer, their fastest Pokemon has 127 base speed, hypothetically. Um, oh, that was with zero investment. Oh my god, am I an idiot? Yeah, I'm an idiot. See, normally I'm good with stats, but I think I'm just a bit excited. Yeah, no, no, you're not outspeeding 160s. What am I talking about? Uh, you're asking, yeah, that seems a lot more reasonable. Okay. <laughs> um, 137 is what you speed tie with. So you can go look at the speed tier guide. There's a very detailed one on the Google Sheet down below. By the way, I have buffed and changed 600 plus moves in this hack. There are 130 plus custom brand new moves, as you can see on screen. If you are listening to the video, you hopefully know that by now. But if you don't, please do give that a look in the description below. Um, there's a lot of useful links there, including the move sheet and speed tier guide in this case will help you look at and see what you can outspeed. Um, on the opponent's team. But yeah, 137 is the cap. That's what you're outspeeding. That's what the neutral speed. If you got lucky and got like timid or something or a plus speed nature, then you're outspeeding everything. At that point, you're outspeeding everything that's relevant. There'll be like two boss fights where you don't outspeed something with Volt Rush. And honestly, it's a late game encounter, anyways. You're probably outspeeding everything. Uh, and Volt Rush, of course, also gives you a massive 50% boost under electric terrain. Electric terrain is widely distributed amongst electric types, steel types, and a couple of psychic types and other Pokemon as, as a TM. So you don't have to go catch an electric surge Pokemon, although there are about a dozen of them um, that you can choose from with Zerkatree, you can pair it up with him if you want. But if you're not, if you're doing a Nuzlocke, especially a Team Lock Nuzlocke, you don't 
need a Surge Pokemon to use Volt Rush reliably. You could even theoretically use it on yourself with Z Electric Train with plus two Speed F and Strength 7 and stuff, but that's a bit gimmicky. The best option is to just use it on somebody else uh, with Terrain Extender and then Parting Shot or Volt Switch into your Zerka Tree, and now you have six full turns uh, after the, yeah, because turn one is eight, then seven, and now you're going to have six full turns of Volt Rush, which is plenty. Uh, and you can use stuff like Power Glow and Call Mind, and you can try to set up Sweep. Uh, you have Giga Drain and Parabolic Charge, but my main point earlier that I was getting at with Dazzling, not only does Dazzling fit very well, but you're not going to be using Volt Rush every fight. You're not going to be setting up every fight. Maybe you have another terrain Pokemon. Maybe you're running him under Grassy Terrain. You know, that would be viable as well because he gets the residual healing. You can use Leech Seed and Strength Sap and he gets that grass type move boost. Um, or you can just run him in general. You don't, you don't need to run terrain every boss fight. You can just use him as a regular Pokemon because Electric Grass, while it does gain a few weaknesses from pure electric, it also gains a lot of valuable resistances, including stuff like water. Let me just go to Rotom to show it. Um, no, no, Mo Rotom. Um, you have a four times resist to electric, water and grass and steel, and then you're only weak to three types, four types, excuse me, fire, ice, poison, and bug. Uh, and then the thing I was saying with Dazzling is Dazzling is great because first impression, as you can see on screen, is one of the most common priority moves in the game. Basically, like 80% of the physical attackers or even non-physical attackers get this move via DM now. So being completely immune to that is beautiful for Zerka Tree because he's now weak to it as a grass type. So that alone makes Dazzling worth it. And of course, you're immune to other priority moves. Uh, there are several priority moves for each type. Oh, I didn't even cover this yet, but yeah, Zerka Tree has Shockwave via Tutor, which is incredible coming off a of 173 base special attack. Absolutely insane. 55 base power plus two priority moves. That's great for especially slower electric types. Um, and it's nice for all types of Pokemon, including non-electric types, because it's a common uh, Tutor move that a lot of Pokemon get. So that's beautiful for Zerka Tree as well. Uh, Giga Drain, Parabolic Charge plus Assault Vest would be really fun. Strength Sap Leech Seed is really fun. Like, you don't have to run Volt Rush every fight. I mean, uh, Strength Sap is also good with Volt Rush, to be fair. Uh, with, like, Calm Mind, Strength Sap, Volt Rush, man. He can do so many things. Power Glow, of course, is Tail Glow, so I can give it to more Pokemon. Zerka Tree likes that, but honestly, it's complete overkilling game, although it does pair nicely with Giga Drain and Parabolic Charge. So you can use that with uh, Volt Rush, but I would, pr I would probably prefer Calm Mind. Um, I feel like plus three is such overkill. In competitive, this would be crazy, but again, these are not balanced for competitive use. Uh, his new bulk is great, 30 speed up and 30 HP. Um, that's another reason I wanted to drop speed because like he's already very fast under terrain and you're not using him in terrain every fight. You're going to use him as a bulky, slow, you know, offensive, like tanky guy for a lot of fights. He's not running Volt Rush every fight, unless you want to, but like that's a bit restrictive. You know, you're not going to need Volt Rush every fight, that's for sure. And Zerka Tree is huge and I do try to base HP more on size now. So I put most of the stats in HP, so he has 113 base HP fits his absolutely huge 12 foot long, 12 foot tall stature. And then a good spit F stat fits him very well as well. In my opinion, his fist def is pretty mediocre, but with that HP stat and some investment, you will take physical hits very nicely. You also have some funny meme stuff like Coil, great new coverage, uh, Aura Sphere, Psychic, Shadow Ball, Subspaced Hair, Radiant Edge, Radiant Outburst, all these very strong moves. Electra Outburst is an absolute nuke. It's fucking hilarious. It's a bit broken, but who cares? Like, it's complete overkill. Zap Cannon alone is overkill. 150 uh, base power move that charges special attack stat by two. So if you click that twice in a row, that's still stronger than moves like Thunderbolt, by the way. Um, so two Zap Cannons in a row is 225. Two Thunderbolts in a row is only 180. Uh, two Thunders in a row is stronger. That's 240 versus 225. But of course, you're risking a 15% chance to miss in that case. Um, so it's not like the best thing in the world. He'd be pretty good under rain too. You know, you got no miss Thunders. You lose your fire weakness. So he can he can be very flexible. Weather Ball also in the in the rain. Like he can you know grassy terrain. Well, he, even psychic terrain. You know, he's immune to priority. Uh, obviously, he has dazzling for that. But you know, psychic terrain. You get that boosted subspace tear or psychic. Like he can be good under all types of things. Even under sun, you got solar beam or weather ball right there. You know, so he's very versatile. You can slap him on a team. You don't need to build an electric terrain team to use Zerka Tree. Uh, he's great under all types of circumstances. But yeah, great new coverage moves. Flash Cannon's 110 base power, Aura Sphere, Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, Psychic are all great coverage moves. He's just so fucking fun. Uh, Strength Sap fits in very well, by the way, in my opinion. He's like this weird alien Ultra Beast. He drains life from the ground, so I think Strength Sap and Leech Seed fit him, despite him not actually being a real tree with seeds. Um... Yeah, Zap Cannon, absolute nuke. And Electro Outburst, by the way, is just a stronger version of Zap Cannon with less PP. It drops a special attack stat by four, but it's 180 base power. So if you use that twice in a row, that is uh, 180 plus 60, that's 240. So two Electro Outbursts in a row is the same power as two Thunders in a row. And of course, that first hit is even stronger, 180 versus 120. So yeah, the, only down the main downside is that it only has three PP though. But I mean, in game, like that's all you need. You just use it once or twice and switch out. Uh, Volt Switch is great under Volt Rush, or just in general. Like I said, that bulky Assault Vest is something that would be really good for a lot of boss fights. You can take you can sponge special hits and heal it back with Giga Drain and Strange, uh, sorry, Parabolic Charge. And then Volt Switch is a great switch move. You can run Shockwave for priority or a covers move on that fourth move slot. Um, 
So yeah, he can do so many awesome things, all right? I think I've covered pretty much everything. So thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you listened this far into the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you did. Uh, that would be a big help for me if I could know how many people actually listen, especially when I tell them to listen all the way through. I'm curious how many of you actually did. So let me know. Thank you so much. I'll be back for more Ultra Beasts. This is the last weird type change in my opinion. The rest of them are all pretty reasonable. But Zergatry and Feramosa are both pretty fucking weird. I, I know that. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye, everybody. So cool, man.